Scientists at CERN have made a terrifying new discovery that could change our understanding of physics forever. The Large Hadron Collider at CERN is known for discovering new exotic subatomic particles, but its latest discovery may be the most exciting yet. Let's take a closer look. CERN is the European Laboratory for Particle Physics located near Geneva in Switzerland. It is home to the LHC, a device that boosts subatomic particles to enormous energies in a controlled way so that scientists can study the resulting interactions. The large that the L stands for is an understatement. The LHC is by far the biggest accelerator in the world, occupying a circular tunnel around 16.7 miles in circumference. The middle letter H stands for hadron the generic name for composite particles such as protons that are made up of smaller particles called quarks. Finally, the C stands for collider, because the LHC accelerates two particle beams in opposite directions and all the action takes place when the beams collide. Like all physics experiments, the LHC's aim is to test theoretical predictions, in this case the so-called standard model of particle physics, and see if there are any holes in them. Strange as it sounds, physicists are itching to find a few holes in the standard model because there are some things, such as dark matter and dark energy, that can't be explained until they do. The LHC opened in 2009, but CERN's history goes back much further than that. The foundation stone was laid in 1955, following a recommendation by the European Council for nuclear research. Between its creation and the opening of the LHC, CERN was responsible for a series of groundbreaking discoveries, including weak neutral currents, light neutrinos, and the WNZ bosons. One of the key mysteries of the universe is why it seemingly contains so much more matter than antimatter. According to the Big Bang Theory, the universe must have started with equal amounts of both. Yet, very early on, probably within the first second of the universe's existence, virtually all the antimatter had disappeared, and only the normal matter we see today remained. The asymmetry has been given the technical name CP violation, and studying it is one of the main aims of the Large Hadron Collider's LHCb experiment. All hadrons are made up of quarks, but LHCb is designed to detect particles that include a particularly rare type of quark known as beauty. Studying CP violation in particles containing beauty is one of the most promising ways to shed light on the emergence of matter-antimatter asymmetry in the early universe. Away from the LHC, there are other facilities at CERN that are conducting important research. One experiment at CERN's proton synchrotron is linking particle physics to climate science. This is a smaller and less sophisticated accelerator than the LHC, but it's still capable of doing useful work. The climate experiment is called CLOUD, which stands for Cosmics Leaving Outdoor Droplets. It's been theorized that cosmic rays play a role in cloud formation by seeding tiny water droplets around the Earth. This isn't an easy process to study in the real atmosphere with real cosmic rays, so CERN is using the accelerator to create its own cosmic rays. These are then fired into an artificial atmosphere where their effects can be studied much more closely. Sharing the same underground cavern as LHCb is a smaller instrument called MOEDL, which stands for Monopole and Exotics Detector at the LHC. While most CERN experiments are designed to study known particles, this one is aimed at discovering undiscovered particles that lie outside the present standard model. A monopole, for example, would be a magnetized particle consisting only of a north pole without a south one, or vice versa. Such particles have long been hypothesized but never observed. The purpose of MOEDL is to look out for any monopoles that might be created in collisions inside the LHC. This experiment could also potentially detect certain stable massive particles that are predicted by theories beyond the standard model. If it's successful in finding any of these particles, MOEDL could help to resolve fundamental questions, such as the existence of other dimensions or the nature of dark matter. Antimatter often pops into existence inside CERN's high-energy accelerators as one half of a particle-antiparticle pair. 
But in the usual course of events, the antiparticles don't last long before they're annihilated in collisions with ordinary particles. If you want to create an antimatter that stays around long enough for detailed study, you need more than just an accelerator. This is where CERN's antimatter factory comes in. It takes antiparticles created in the proton synchrotron and slows them down to manageable speeds in what is effectively the exact opposite of a particle accelerator, the antiproton decelerator. The resulting antiatoms can then be studied by a range of instruments. The LHC restarted on April 22, 2022 after three years of maintenance work and upgrades. Scientists use the LHC to test theoretical predictions in particle physics, particularly those associated with the standard model. While the standard model can explain almost all results in particle physics, there are some questions left unanswered, such as what is dark matter and dark energy? Why is there more matter than antimatter? The LHC is designed to help answer such questions. The LHC can reproduce the conditions that existed within a billionth of a second of the Big Bang. One of the most significant LHC breakthroughs came in 2012 with the discovery of the Higgs boson. Although widely referred to as the God Particle, it's not as awesome in itself as that name might suggest. Its huge significance came from the fact that it was the last prediction of the standard model that hadn't yet been proven. But the Higgs boson is far from being the LHC's only discovery. It is responsible for finding around 60 previously unknown hadrons, which are complex particles made up of various combinations of quarks. Even so, all those new particles still lie within the bounds of the standard model, which the LHC has struggled to move beyond, much to the disappointment of the numerous scientists who have spent their careers working on alternative theories. The first tantalizing hint that a breakthrough might be just around the corner came in 2021, when analysis of LHC data revealed patterns of behavior that indicated small but definite departures from the standard model. On the precipice of new physics, scientists are keen to make use of the LHC's new upgrades to investigate the Higgs boson, explore dark matter, and potentially expand our understanding of the standard model, the leading theory describing all known fundamental forces and elementary particles in the universe. With the new upgrades, CERN has increased the power of the LHC's injectors, which feed beams of accelerated particles into the collider. At the time of the previous shutdown in 2018, the collider could accelerate beams up to an energy of 6.5 tera electron volts, and that value has been raised to 6.8 tera electron volts. For reference, a single tera electron volt is equivalent to 1 trillion electron volts. To increase the energy of the proton beams to such an extreme level, the thousands of superconducting magnets, whose fields direct the beams around their trajectory, need to grow accustomed to much stronger currents after a long period of inactivity. With LHC's magnets trained and the proton beams more powerful than ever, the LHC will be able to create collisions at higher energies than ever before, expanding the possibilities for what scientists using the upgraded equipment might find. Once this latest run for the LHC concludes in 2024, CERN scientists will shut it down for another planned overhaul that will include more upgrades for the massive particle accelerator. Once complete, those upgrades will allow scientists to rename LHC the High Luminosity Large Hadron Collider once it reopens in 2028. As huge as it is, the LHC can't function without the help of other machines around it. Before particles, which are usually protons but for some experiments are much heavier lead ions, are injected into it, they're passed through a chain of smaller accelerators that progressively boost their speed. Smaller is just a relative term. The last step in the injector chain, the superproton synchrotron, is almost 4.3 miles in circumference. The result is two beams traveling in opposite directions around the LHC at virtually the speed of light. The beams are kept on their circular trajectories by a strong magnetic field, which has the effect of bending the path of electrically charged particles. At four points around the LHC's vast ring, the opposing beams are brought together and made to collide, and that's where all the science happens. Particles are smashed together with such enormous energies that the collisions create a cascade of new particles, most of them extremely short-lived. The important thing for scientists is to work out what all these particles are, and that's not an easy task. 
The LHC has an array of sophisticated particle detectors for this purpose, each made up of layers of sub-detectors designed to measure certain particle properties or to look for specific types of particles. For example, calorimeters measure a particle's energy, while the curving track of a particle in a magnetic field reveals information about its electric charge and momentum. Two of the four collision points around the circumference of the LHC are occupied by large general-purpose detectors. These include the compact muon solenoid, which can be thought of as a giant 3D camera snapping images of particles up to 40 million times per second. The paths of the particles inside the detector are controlled by a gigantic electromagnet called a solenoid. Despite weighing 12,500 metric tons, it's quite compact, as the detector's name suggests. That middle ward, muon, refers to an elusive particle similar to the electron, but much more massive, which requires its array of sub-detectors wrapped around the solenoid. Latest reports state that the physicists at CERN have discovered a plethora of new exotic particles being created in the collisions produced by the Large Hadron Collider over the past few years. So many have been found, in fact, that it has become hard for physics to keep up with the discoveries. Scientists have even had to develop a new naming scheme to help impose some order on the growing list. The LHC has been a treasure trove for new types of particles called hadrons. These are subatomic particles made from two or more quarks. Conventionally, these come in two types. Baryons, such as the protons and neutrons, which make up the atomic nucleus, are made of three quarks. Masons, on the other hand, are made up of a quark paired with an antiquark. Although there are only six different types of quarks, and only five of these form hadrons, there are a huge number of possible combinations. In the 1980s, particle physicists devised a naming scheme for the hadron zoo, with a symbol for each particle that made it easy to discern its quark content. Until recent years, all newly discovered particles fitted nicely into that scheme as either baryons or mesons. But scientists eventually realized that more complicated hadrons with more than three quarks could also be possible, so-called tetraquarks, composed of two quarks and two antiquarks, and pentaquarks, composed of four quarks and one antiquark. The absence of logic underlying the names given to the new particles led, perhaps inevitably, to some confusion. A naming scheme is an important part of the language used to communicate between people working in particle physics. Scientists hope that this new scheme will help in the ongoing quest to understand features that defy deep mathematical understanding. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about SpaceX's new Starship prototype. Do you think the LHC is dangerous? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.